Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New York Jets franchise as we continue here in Season 3 after a pretty good start here with Chance Tyree at quarterback. Now, last episode, we kind of left off with Le'Veon Bell requesting to be traded. Now, I'm going to honor that request. I'm still looking for teams to trade him to, but I have some capable guys of replacing Le'Veon Bell. We've obviously known about Deion Carter, but how about the fifth round rookie, Dwayne Lincoln? He is doing amazing so far, and he is a big reason why it's kind of easier to let go of Le'Veon Bell. Let's look at other guys around the NFL that are rookie quarterbacks. The Titans with Justin DiRoberto are 2-0 so far, off to a good start in his career. George Jenkins, the number one overall pick, is the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. They are 1-1 one one to start this season. I'm hoping that they get it turned around because they have been really bad so far in this series. Ethan Brown got drafted by the Saints to replace Drew Brees, and he was the guy that was kind of the fourth fiddle, but he already has the Saints off to a 2-0 start. He's not bad as a quarterback either. So this is going to be a triple header episode as we go up against the Ravens first, the Chiefs second, and the Vikings third. And this is a rare type of episode. I won't have many triple headers, but I like these episodes to get through the season faster. So let's hop into the highlights of this game. Here is Chance T Tyree in a 0-0 game, and he throws left side on the run, and he's got Jamison Crowder for a first down for his first throw of the game. So now at the 11-yard line, throws to left side. It's Tariq Macklin wide open. Touchdown. Tariq Macklin coming in as kind of a different type of role this year. He plays a lot of fullback. You'll see him in the pistol formation lined up next to either Carter or Lincoln or Bell, whoever's in the game. And he gets in there. It makes it 7-0. So now with a 7-3 game, here is Christopher Herndon, and he can't hold on to that one. And that one will be a drop, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. We kick the field goal and make it a 10-3 game. So this is a defensive struggle here all the way to the fourth quarter as Lamar Jackson throws the left side, and he's got Devin Duvernay for the touchdown. He gets in, and this game is tied at 10 apiece here in the fourth quarter. So Chance Tyree with a chance to take this lead here as he fakes to the running back, rolls to the right side. He's got space, and he will get out of bounds. And here I was not used to the, uh, I'm still not used to the sliding mechanism. I hate the double X to slide, and I'm so used to tapping X. And they had that to start the game. I'm not sure why they got rid of that, to be honest. Here's the throw to the left side, and it's Christopher Herndon. And that's a catch on the sideline for a first down. So now at the 42, Le'Veon Bell getting some playing time. He gets it up the middle. And I want to make sure I don't get him hurt, but I do still want to get him some playing time. He gets a gain of 10 yards. So now at the 34-yard line, Tyree facing pressure. He tries to get rid of it. He goes down. It is Bud Dupree who we were trying to go after last offseason, and we let him walk. I guess not let him walk, but we let him sign with a different team. Is now that brings it to a third and 32. T Chance Tyree is under pressure, and Dupree is there again. They sent the pressure, and they get the punt here. So now the Ravens have a chance to score here at the end of the game. So two minutes Got left this time. They try to run the screen pass. He can't get it away. It's Solomon Thomas there for his second sack of the season. So now that brings it to a second and 18. Another screen pass and another great play. This time it's C.J. Mosley who stops the screen. So they try to get us two times in a row here. Now a third and long. This time handoff, and it's going to be about a couple yards carry. I believe that was Jordan Howard on that play. So now we have the ball back here. Just about a minute, 15 seconds left as Chance Tyree takes it himself, throws on the run, and he's got an open man. It's Denzel Mims to the 40, and a first down for him. Nice throw on the run by Chance Tyree. So now handoff at the 41, and he gives it to Deion Carter, who falls forward to about the 34, and we burn our first timeout. So 30 seconds left. Here is Tyree, he throws to the right side, and it's a dime of a throw. Crowder's got it at the 17, and we decide to waste this clock all the way down 
and line up for the field goal. We bring in the rookie, Kristaps Ivanov from St. Louis State, and the kick is up, and it is good. We start off this season 3-0. Great start so far. And how about this defense shutting Lamar Jackson down at the end of the game? But look at the yardage. I mean, they barely got 200 yards. It was barely that. I think our defense is playing extremely well. It's just as long as we can continue to get after the quarterback. And remember last year, I think that was our issue is that we could not get after the quarterback late in the season. And hopefully we can kind of balance that out now since we drafted a couple of pass rushers i'm hoping that they will make a difference if there is an injury and i really lo love what i saw from chance tyree he's not turning the ball over it was a solid win so a couple of upgrades after that game blake cashman goes up and he's at 89 speed he is just amazing right now he is kind of playing his best football i think and la the first season, you know, he kind of had to get jolted into the starting lineup. And from there, he kind of took a backup role. But he's on the field quite a bit, and he's been balling out, to be honest. David Monroe, who might be the future at center for us, he gets an upgrade because, remember, Connor McGovern is the starter right now. But we drafted Monroe to be the eventual starter. He goes up. Now, I won't go after the... Uh, I won't actually show you guys the draft class yet. That'll probably be next episode. But I do want to get into some more gameplay here and go up against the Chiefs. And they're still the same Chiefs. Not many changes, to be honest, with the Chiefs. They still have, you know, Chris Jones, Tyra Matthew on defense, and then still Patrick Mahomes, obviously, Tyreek Hill, and uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I mean, still the same guys there on both sides of the ball. So they're hoping to get back to the playoffs because the Denver Broncos are off to a pretty good start as well. So we start off this game down 17 and nothing. And in this game, I actually did play the moments. I usually don't do that. But this one, uh, I decided to play the moments. I could have played the whole game here, but I decided to play the moments. And this is where we start out here, 17 nothing. So here's a throw to the left side. And that is actually dropped, actually knocked away, I should say. That was double coverage on Jamison Crowder. And we settle 4-3 here, making it 17-3. So now it's 24-3. You can just see how our defense plays without our user control. It's not very pretty, especially versus Patrick Mahomes as he throws the left side, and that's knocked away. Christopher Herndon couldn't hold on to that one, and we settle for another field goal before halftime. But then the Chiefs continue to score. It's now 34-6. Here's Chance Tyree now back out onto the field. He scrambles to the right side, and he will run out of bounds to about the 27. Nice little scramble on that run. So running a man in motion this time is Christopher Herndon, who gets the block and opens up the hole for Dwayne Lincoln, and he gets to about the 11-yard line. Nice run that time, and that picks up a first down as we get it to the 13 to end the third quarter. This time trying to scramble out, but we got sacked on that one. Luckily, Chuma Idoga falls on it. And now that brings it to a third and 23. Tyree throws to the sideline, and he's got a man, Jamison Crowder, to about the three. And that makes it fourth and one. I think we're going to line up to go for this one. So we line up here in the full house package here. Both tight ends out on the field. They send the blitz throw to the end zone. It's caught. Jamison Crowder for the touchdown. We are still down by multiple scores, though. Nothing to really celebrate here. And now that brings us to under five minutes left here in this game. 37 to 13 now. Here's Tyree. He throws the left side. He's got Dwayne Lincoln and tackled. It looks like that's actually going to be a face mask on that. So we're helped out by the penalty. So set up on the other side of the 50 now to about the 32, running a screen pass. We don't run many of these, and this time it's Deion Carter who gets some space, and he picks up about only a gain of six maybe. And that brings it to a third and one. Handoff, Carter up the middle. It's a first down. So it looks like we may be running out of time here late in the game. Here's a throw to the left side. It's Jamison Crowder who catches it and tries to get out of bounds to stop the clock, but he gets stopped at about the nine yard line. So first and goal now at the nine. Tyree throws and he's got a man that's Macklin again, touchdown. Macklin actually leads our team in touchdown receptions this year. 
I believe that's his third, and that brings it to a three-score lead, but way too late here for the Jets. We have to get an onside kick, too, to get back into this game. But two minutes left. It doesn't seem like it's enough time, and Kristaps Ivanov kicks it, and it's recovered by the Chiefs, and they actually go on to win this game. And I wanted to see what our team will play like without our defensive control, and you can already see what, it, what it's like. 37 points to Patrick Mahomes. And maybe it was because it was versus Patrick Mahomes. I mean, you know the Chiefs offense. I mean, it is just lethal. And Jan Tyree, another game without turning the ball over. I mean, he is doing phenomenal so far. And we are actually doing a good job of, you know, keeping him within the offense and not doing too much with him, not taking too many risks. And we're going to start, too, as the season goes on. We'll start, you know, airing it out deep as we're figuring out who we can go deep with because, it seems like Denzel Mims has regressed a little bit as far as just how he performs in the game. He's not the same guy we used to kind of throw it up to. And I guess that's a good thing, too, because a lot of those deep balls actually used to result in interceptions. And now we're not taking those huge risks. But I want to start taking some shots downfield for sure. So going into game number three, we have a couple of upgrades. Chuma Idoga is, like I said, he's due for a big contract. And I'm going to pay him basically off of production, not his overall. So he's probably not going to demand much in this game. But let's just be honest. In real life, if you were producing the way Chuma Idoga is, I mean, you're going to get a pretty big contract, a pretty hefty one. And, I mean, just remember a couple of games ago versus Khalil Mack and how that game went. I mean, he was amazing in that game. Gave up one sack. Not too many quarterback hits, and that's versus the best pass rusher in the game. So Peter Weeks got an upgrade there as we hop into the next game here in this episode in the final one as we go up against the Minnesota Vikings. But before hopping into this game, I decided to just look around the NFL and just look at teams that we can possibly be trading Le'Veon Bell to because we still have him on the block. We have not received many offers at all. Now, there are a lot of good running backs now in the NFL. Pretty much every team has a pretty good starter. And one team that I do see that doesn't have a good one here, and I guess he's not bad, but he's not great, is the Packers. A.J. Dillon is their top running back. He's 77 overall. He's only 24 years old, too. But then the Washington football team. It's interesting because I did remove Darius guys from the game, and now they have a kind of a hole at running back. And I think that Le'Veon Bell could be a perfect fit with the Washington Redskins. Uh, well, I, see, I already said it. Washington football team. So now we go up against the Vikings who have one year left on Kirk Cousins' deal. you got to be thinking that they're probably going to be looking to kind of rebuild with the new quarterback in the draft. I guess we'll have to see what they do, but... They have not won. I mean, it's just simple. They have not won the division at all. I believe the Bears won that division last year, led by Pat Perez. Year before that, it was the Packers. I mean, the Vikings are just not winning with uh, Kirk Cousins at all. So they're going to have to probably rebuild there at the quarterback position. So let's hop into some action here in game number three in this episode. Chance Tyree off to a hot start. Nine touchdowns two interceptions i mean i couldn't ask for more he's also running the ball extremely well so we start out this game with the ball as we hand off this time to Dwayne lincoln who breaks the tackle and gets up field and he gets to about the 50 already and you can just see his carries are going to start to go up as we do try to unload Le'Veon bell so running Jamison Crowder in motion. We're going to flip it to him. No, we're going to hand off to Carter. He's got space. He gets to the outside. It gets to about the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 10 yards. So now at the 40-yard line this time in that kind of pistol formation with the tight end on the field. We throw to the right side, and we've got Christopher Herndon open. It's a gain of 18 on the first pass by Chance Tyree to the 22. So lined up now with a bunch formation to the right side for a third and five. Quick throw across the middle. It's Denzel Mims. I want to get him going more. He converts the first down, first and goal. So we get it to the six-yard line here for a second and goal. It's an option keeper, and Tyree takes it in untouched. It's a touchdown. You just love the versatility from this kid. It's 7-0 here for your Jets. 
So the Vikings do start off the next drive with pretty good field position after a couple of big plays as they hand off to Dalvin Cook. Nice stop by Blake Cashman, who we just got done talking about. So third and 10 this time, play action fake. Kirk Cousins throws to the right side. It's deflected and knocked away, and it falls to the ground, and the Vikings settle for three. So now to start the second quarter this time, Tyree throws across the middle, a wide open Deion Carter in space. He gets it to the 15. That's a gain of 22 yards on that one, and it's a first down inside the 20-yard line. So now Tyree from the shotgun here for a second and 14, throwing to Tariq Macklin, touchdown! His fourth of the season. You gotta love Tyree under pressure. He just makes accurate throws. And that's what's just so funny about it is that, you know, Darnold had the better ratings, but Tyree just seems to be more consistently accurate. And that brings it to a 14 to three game. So we get the ball back one more time before halftime. Here's a handoff, Dwayne Lincoln. Does the, do they give him the first down? It looks like they do. It's a first down carry. So here's Lincoln this time in the backfield. Nice blitz pickup, throw to the end zone. It's turned in, knocked away. He almost came down with that one. That would have been a great catch, but it's incomplete, bringing it to a third and 10. Tyree moves to the right side. He's gonna take it himself, and he steps out of bounds. Only a gain of six, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna kick this field goal and go into halftime. So we fast forward all the way to the fourth quarter now. Here's Tyree with a 20 to 10 lead. As here he rolls to the right side, he's got space. He's gonna take off and he's got speed down the sideline. Gets to about the 30. And there is another great scramble by Tyree. And you can just see that is just such a weapon. It's a demoralizing weapon to be honest to the defense. So handoff, Dwayne Lincoln. Look at Makai Becton clearing the way for him. Picks up a gain of seven yards. So to the 25 now, it's a third and three this time. Tyree moves to the right side. It's gonna be caught. Denzel Mims inside the five. And Tyree continues to show that accuracy. First and goal. So Lincoln in the game, handoff to him. He gets to the left side, it's a touchdown. He gets in, extends this lead here. And Dwayne Lincoln could be the future of this backfield. And now it's 27 to 10. So here is Kirk Cousins back out onto the field, trying to throw the ball, and he goes down. It's Jordan Jenkins in for the sack. If he could have a great year, he's on the final year of his deal, I will be extremely happy. Second and long, and it's another sack here for this defense. Henry Anderson and Brad Matthews were there. So third and 38 at their own six yard line, under two, under three minutes left, I should say. Throw to left side, it's Thielen. He catches it, Emmanuel Mosley with the stop, and they're gonna have to punt this one away. Well, they decide to go for it. Just give us the field position, why not? It is fourth and 22. Here is Cousins, he throws to left side, and he's got nobody to throw it to, but it's going to be a flag on Blake Cashman. So they get bailed out. So at their 48 now, here is Kirk Cousins from the shotgun. Nobody to throw it to. Absolutely nobody to throw it to. He's still in the pocket. Nobody's moving, and he's still got time. This is a long play, and it's finally over. A sack by Jordan Jenkins. Nobody was moving on that play. They were just sitting there watching their quarterback in the pocket. So here's Cousins. He throws the left side on a second and 23, and he's going to find Ola B.C. Johnson. Across the 50 as the Vikings burn a timeout. Looks like Henry Anderson was shaking up that time with the bruised sternum. Third and seventh row across the middle, and it's going to be caught and fumbled and picked up by the Vikings. Marcus May on the hit. And now this drive continues here with about a minute left in this game as they recover the fumble as Kirk Cousins throws to the end zone right over George Caver. It's a touchdown and he finds Jordan Jefferson for the uh, tutty that time. And now they kick the onside kick, now a 10 point game. We recover this, it's over, it's bobbled and picked up. That was close. Christopher Herndon falls on it, and that will be the game. We start off this season pretty hot, four and one. I can't be mad at that start at all. And we win this game 27 to 17. 
and we get a whole lot of offensive production here out of our offense 400 yards total Ty Tyree is just he's 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 incredible a touchdown no interceptions that's his 10th touchdown of the season throwing the football he's also got about three or four yards rushing or three or four touchdowns rushing this year as well Dwayne Lincoln ran the ball well 15 for 65 Deion Carter six for 38 and then Chance I retook it five times for 40 we could just see like this offense everybody touches the ball Mims had his high of the season with 82 reception yards and then you know Deion Carter out of the backfield is very very good he had three for 61 himself and Tariq Macklin adds another touchdown to his total we did get after the quarterback in this one Quinton Williams had two Jenkins had two Henry Anderson and Brad Matthews both had a half sack no interceptions but I can't be mad at this pass rush we are playing extremely well as Justin Jefferson had 10 for 115 and a touchdown so Deion Carter does have a uh, dev trade up, not dev trade upgrade, uh, upgrade for his ratings, and he goes up to 67 overall. And I do, like I said, ignore the overalls because I like how they play on the field. I definitely base it off of production, not overall itself. Jordan Jenkins has an upgrade. He's on the last year of his deal. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring him back just because of how the money works and just I'm going to base it off of realistic contracts. He's going to get a pretty good contract. You know, you just think of Shaq Barrett, for example. He had a great season with the Buccaneers last year and ended up being like one of the highest paid. He got franchise tagged, so he's not one of the highest paid pass rushers. And that was just off of one year production. He's very, very good, but he got paid off of that. And if Jordan Jenkins has that type of year or even has like a top five year, He's going to get top five money. That's just how it goes in the NFL. So next episode, we will go up against the number one overall pick in George Jenkins. I mean, this is going to be an awesome game. I want to see what the new look Dolphins look like. They only have one win on the season. And we also get to face our former safety in the Wisconsin State Whitetails dynasty, Nathan Beaver. They drafted him. I'm excited to see him start for the defense. So this is going to be an interesting game. And then there's Terrence Kitchens, who they drafted with the, I believe it was number three overall pick in season one. And boy, have they used him wrong. He has a half sack. I mean, I don't understand how you draft my number three and he ends up with just a half sack here in game number six. So that's going to do it here as we do conclude this episode. I think next episode we will go over the NFL draft preview. Otherwise, it'll be this Dolphins game. I'm not really sure if I'll have the draft ready, but we'll have to see. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition, but the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter, though. Yeah.